Hey there, Evil Dragon here with another Pyra video. Although you can't see me today, you can just see my hands and you will be able to see a lot of Pyra and Pandora case parts like here. Um, because I'm going to assemble a Pyra today and a Pandora and we'll show you the differences. Let's first start with a case, with a lid. This is the Pandora lid as you can see here. There are not too many differences here on first sight. Of course, the logo is different. This is where the metal frame and the small logo will be put in. I don't have the metal frame here. It's in one small bag and we are still unpacking from Gamescom. So um, I didn't have that bag with me right now. But here's the logo, which is uh, semi-transparent. So you can um, have the LEDs behind them. And this, of course, doesn't exist with the Pandora because it doesn't have a backlit um, LED. Okay, one thing you can see here which is different is that area right now. This is open, this is closed. Pay attention to that because that will be very important at some part. You can see that on this side here as well. And another thing is that is different is with the Pandora we had clips on all sides and some screws which is heavily overkill and which means if it's assembled and everything clicked in of course you probably might know that if you have ever tried to disassemble a Pandora this is nigh impossible to open it again you can see that it's not really easy and now think if there's an LCD in there it's even harder with the Pyro we changed that a bit there are also clips on two sides and screws on the others which means if I put that in here and it's now fully closed, especially with those two screws, you can easily remove it again because it's only clipped on two sides. So that's an improvement if you try to open the case. We've got another improvement, uh, but we'll come to that later. Okay, let's now see the next part. As you know, the LCD cable. This is Pandora's LCD cable and um, yeah, you know, it will be, it was rolled here and sometimes it broke. Um, this is the Pyra LCD cable. It looks a lot more simple, of course, because there's no PCB on here, which is for the audio part, because we don't have any speakers in Pyra's case, obviously. And there's one huge difference. As you can see, this, these are all the traces needed for the uh, Pandora here. A lot of traces and every single one is needed. These are the traces needed for the Pyra. At first it seems, oh wow, this will break even more because this one, this area here is even smaller. But let's first take a look. Here, these are all single traces, okay? And these are all rolled. Now, one thing with the Pyra LCD cable is, you can see here are also small traces and these are also needed, but this part, this, the, the, the small part, will not be rolled. Only the big part will be rolled. And now let's take a close look on that part. I hope you can see that. There are small traces here, but actually these are double traces. So every single trace here um, splits into two. And as you can see here, these, these horizontal lines, they all connect together. So the part that will be rolled will be basically redundant because it has two lines per um, trace or two traces per, per line needed. And if it breaks in between here, these two lines, the, the redundant line will be connected together here again. So regardless where it breaks, it would need to have to break two lines um, for it to fail. So the LCD cable should be a lot um, more robust than on the Pandora. It's cheaper to produce because it doesn't have a PCB on here, doesn't have speakers and it should be more robust. Okay, now let's see. Next, Pandora. How you will assemble it? If you ever did it, you know you've got to place the LCD here. Then here are the two speakers which will go here. And then you connect the LCD and you roll the cable. I will not do that now completely because I've got a video where uh, Pandora is assembled and disassembled as well. And of course we also have the Wi-Fi antenna here which needs to go down as well. With the Pyra we don't have the speakers, we don't have the Wi-Fi antenna, 
So basically all we need to do, start with that one. Now um, we've got the LCD, which first needs to be connected to the display PCB. This is still an older revision of the P display PCB. The new one will have the logo a bit different and it will be cut out. You probably have seen photos on the forum as well, but um, it's already inside another unit which is not transparent, so I didn't want to open it up again. Okay, to assemble these two, this is pretty easy. I usually first connect the touchscreen connector at first, because otherwise it's a bit awkward. So let's close it. Touchscreen is now connected. Turn the unit around, connect the LCD and there you go. Then this will be connected of course to the LCD cable. There you go, already assembled. Now let's try to roll the cable. We need three rolls to be exact. One, two and three. Then we will simply slide it through here. There's a tiny gap where we can slide it through. And there you go. As you can see, the roll only happens in the white area where we have the redundant traces. There's no rolling happening and no force when opening and closing it in the small area. So then, just clip this one in. Uh, I, should <laughs> I should remove the protector foil as well. Then clip it together. That's it. All we need here are two small screws. Uh, three. So that's one. Two. And three. Up. Oh, stay here. So that's it, no gap in the front, unlike on the Pandora, as you know, there's nothing here. Fully assembled, holding together, SD cable is in there, and that's it. One thing we have to do with the final unit as well is place a small magnet inside here for closing the lid. Um, on the Pandora this was uh, the magnet from the speakers, but as we don't have any speakers, it will be placed in here. So, there's so much for the lid. Let's continue. Did you remember these two parts? They are important, don't forget them. So let's take a look at the next part, which is obviously the base here, which again looks very similar on the Pyra, except for some minor differences. Um, the speakers are of course now here. We've got two buttons more on, on that side. And there's a fourth key row here and we don't have the holes for the microphone or the LEDs here. But apart from that it's very similar, but of course improved again. So let's see with Pandora. One thing that's the same with both is the hinge, which has to be put right into here, that part, fully in, because then the LCD will be taken Cable will go through here. And once that is done, you can either use uh, some pliers to uh, push it uh, to close it, or you can uh, screwdriver and click in the hinge. So now this part is assembled. But did you pay the, uh, the, the attention to that part as I mentioned it? One problem with the Pandora was now you can't open the upside anymore because this part, the uh, thing we just slid it in, is part of the outer area. So if you would try to open it again, oh, which is hard anyways because of all those uh, packs, yeah, clips, 
if you try to open it, you can't because it, it is blocked here. That's something where we made the different on the Pyra. Okay, let's see. So here is the new one. First, of course, we need the same hinge. Opa. So same hinge, you, uh, I hear some of you say, oh boy, then I won't be uh, able to open close it wherever I want. Um, this will be fixed with these special things. This will be made a bit thicker so that we add a bit of friction here and will also be made a bit oval and with that friction you should be able to open and close it fully. That's currently being tweaked because that's minor changes that you always have to uh, change the mold, uh, make new cases, try them until it's perfect. Okay, now here. Same thing, slide the SD cable through here. There we are. And same thing here as well. And it's assembled as well. Well, as mentioned, one difference. This, this in thing inside here is not part of this case. So what I can do here on the Pyra is, well, I won't do it, well, I will show you. I just speed up the unscrewing. Remove the few screws. And now you can simply open it because it is not fixed here. So if you ever need to work on here, fix something or uh, try some modification, you can always open the upper part without having to disassemble the lower part as it was the case with the Pandora. And as we only have a few clips, it's a lot more easy to open it up as well. Okay, let's close it again. Okay, now we got two units which are assembled. Pandora and Pyra. So on the Pandora you would have to put in the, the light pipes and everything. Now I will not do that and the buttons and well you've seen it on the on the other video so I don't have to show you here. One thing that's interesting to notice is that um, uh, before we glued the D-pad on the key mat it was already planned to have it uh, done like here with small packs and only put in this. But the problem is it always clicks and makes a noise if you move it because plastic goes on plastic. Um, we tried the same with the Pyra. Right now we also have the same issue that uh, it makes clicking noises. And uh, we are working on two fixes here. Either we will glue it to the key mat as well or we will have a one made of hard rubber which doesn't click and doesn't make any noise. And well, it has a nice surface, but well, I'm not sure yet uh, if we will take this one or if we will uh, simply glue it to the D-pad. This is something that you really need to test play once everything is done. Um, let's compare the key mats. Here you can see uh, Pyra's key mat, which is a lot more complex than the old one. What's more complex? Well, the original key mat, as you can see here, is transparent. And then everything on that is painted and these are small real plastic caps that are glued on top of it. Same for the buttons here. The only thing that is, has not changed is the D-pad. On the Pandora it's just a simple black mat. Uh, with has some coating on the keys. The coating I think over time degrades a bit. And uh, it's not transparent or anything and that of course makes it a lot simpler. Why is it transparent? Well of course you know it's backlit and to have backlit buttons it needs to be transparent and the black on here is all paint. As the paint is below the plastic caps you don't have to be afraid that it wears off. It can drop off or anything like that so that's the same on the Pandora by the way it's below the coating so nothing that can wear off. Um, the light pipes for the LEDs are included here in the key mat as well. So no special LED light pipes needed, it's already included. Okay, let's see here. We've got the D-pad here. All we need to do is put the key mat in. And then if you take a look on the other side, you have the D-pad and all the buttons, everything in there. 
So that's all that's needed to be done. No buttons, no anything that should be a lot faster. Next thing we'll need to do here is put in the speakers. These are the speakers. They have small spring contacts. Basically all you need to do is put them in here and in there. This will be the acoustic room which makes sure that the sound will be great. And one thing that's will, that will be needed, which I don't have yet, but I should get within the next few weeks, is a special ceiling here, which will be some rubber material which goes exactly on the sides here, because that's needed for these type of speakers, and that's why they sound that great. They are special acoustic speakers. Okay, PCB, you know that one already. That's uh, the PCB for the, uh, the, the main mode of the Pyra. Here are the connectors for the spring contacts, vibration motor, the one key chip of course, which is very very important. All the LEDs are placed here and a white coating so that it will be a bit more reflective. And of course what's missing here is the CPU board, which will simply be put on top of it, but that's something I will do later. Next thing we have to take a look at are the nubs. These are the two nubs and they need to go on these nubs on the PCB. I have at first thought, oh, this will be complicated to assemble or anything, but just put them in there. Take the PCB, put the PCB properly into the case here. Turn around. Now you can see the nubs here. Twist them until they click in. Same one here. And that's it. They're assembled. Very, very easy. And now the PCB is already in there. What we need to do now is of course connect the LCD cable. Um, I need to use the screwdriver here for help. That's it, LCD cable is in. And as you can see here, that's what I mean, the, the length is it's still a bit too long here. We need to make it a bit shorter. But the, as you can see the small area will not be affected when you open and close the lid. So, that's it, LCD cable connected as well. Next part is the back side. Let's first compare it with the Pandora's one. Pandora has two shoulder buttons as we already know. And what we need to put here is the stylus holder. The one from the Pyra is similar except that we will have four shoulder buttons here. And well, we also have a stylus holder which we only need to put in here as well. That's it, stylus holder assembled. Now for the shoulder buttons, these go in here. Second one. Third one. And ah, here it is, the fourth one. So here we are, all four shoulder buttons assembled. Um, these are also still tweaked. For example, you can, they are still wiggling too much, as you can see here, wiggling up and down, which they shouldn't do. Um, these are currently being tweaked, on, tweaked so that they will be perfect. So now, everything here is assembled in this part of the case. But let me first show you something different, and this has to do with the battery. On the Pandora, you know, we had a lot of problems with the battery. Um, that when the unit uh, got hit that it, uh, that it lost the battery contact. This is simply because, as you can see, it can move around a lot. If you take a look at this side, you can see how the contacts will move left and right. This is something that should not happen and this is something that has been fixed on the Pyra. It doesn't wiggle anymore really at all. So no padding or anything needed, it just works here. Contacts are there. And this has been proven already on this little thing, which can, if you put it in, uh, light up as you can see. I will show that in the dark because that looks a lot better. Before we can finally assemble the case, of course, we still need to put on the PCB, the CPU PCB. Um, we will put a small a heat pad on there so that it properly connects to this spot and the heat uh, dissipates throughout the entire PCB. And then all we need to do is simply click this on here. The final PCB will be 
it will have a, an edge cut here so that it will fully fit but it still works right now so yes true the connect the, the connections are so good that they even work uh, even though they are only half in basically or don't have that good connection so you don't need to be worried that the CPU board will fall out there's another reason why it won't fall out we will put another um, heat shield here which will then push the PCB down as well so the PCB can't even move. So the final thing to do of course is put this together here. That's it. Shoulder buttons are here. Everything is assembled. All we need to do now is put in the remaining screws. Okay. And as you can see even now the PCB is so much in there it can't move so there's no chance that it will fall out it will stick in so here you are a fully assembled pyra knobs are working nicely really sliding perfect d-pad is working speakers are there no ceiling yet um, but it uh, they still work the buttons are working the keyboard is working sd card slots are in there oh yeah one thing i need to tell you um, with the old pcb this is also one thing we improved you know, we had to put in the uh, SD cards upside down, which was a bit weird. If you take a look, they're sticking a bit outside here, which is something we didn't want. And this is our new testing PCB, where the SD card is already going in the right way. And as you can see, it also don't, won't come off here, so it won't accidentally be removed. But it's still easy to remove. Okay, that's it from us for the video today. Um, I hope you enjoyed the the show were how to assemble a Pyra and especially you like the improvements we made from the Pandora's case. And now the last thing I will show you is this thing in dark. So as you can now see or not see, we are perfectly in the dark. Let's put in the battery and now you can see the keys are evenly lit on the final PCB. They are very, very nicely readable in the dark. Of course, with the transparent case, you have all kinds of light bleeding out of here, which won't happen if the case is not transparent, but it still looks awesome, in my opinion, um, especially here with the, with the PCB lightening up in green and everything. Well, basically, we're almost done. See you soon, and I hope you keep following us and enjoy your time on the board. See you!